am David Cowan, president of the Museum of American Finance, and we thought we'd have a little fun with financial history and have some short, very short videos whereby we are showcasing, highlighting some of the gems of our collection. And we're going to start with an exhibit called Out of the Vault, which we did a couple of years ago, which really highlighted some wonderful items. And we're going to take a look at uh, the first of 10 cases. It was down in Washington, uh, D.C., in one of the convention centers for the Schwab Financial Impact Conference. And the first document we're going to look at is one of the older ones that we have in our collection. In fact, it's from the fourth day of May in the year of our Lord, 1,682 and the fourth and 30th year of the reign of King Charles II. And what's interesting about this document is William Stanley, a gentleman is gonna get 5,000 acres. It's gonna be in what is now modern day Pennsylvania. You can see at the bottom, it's signed by William Penn. And what is the nominal exchange in 1682? Today, we know it's a dollar. You need to have an exchange of value, let's say for the property in this case. Back in that time period, it was one little itty bitty peppercorn. Next, we're gonna fast forward to the time of the Revolutionary War. And the first document we're gonna look at is dated November 2nd, 1776. And a Continental Army Colonel is gonna write Captain Richard Barrack. That's the same Richard Barrack who's gonna be mayor uh, in some 15 or 16 years later in New York City. And he's lamenting that his men are without clothes, they're almost naked, the evil can't be remitted without money, that they haven't been paid for three months and some of the officers for six and it's almost impossible to continue. And the backstory here is uh, George Washington has retreated from New York City, he lost uh, battles there. Then he goes up to White Plains, he loses another battle there. He's about to lose some more battles and retreat pell-mell across New Jersey. We're really close to the low point of the American Revolution. And so what does the Continental Congress, that's the governing body at that time, decide to do to help mitigate this problem and raise some money? They have Powerball 1776. And so what you're looking at now are actual lottery tickets issued some 16 days after that letter whereby people will invest or buy lottery tickets, the government can get some money, and then they will help ameliorate these circumstances. Well, this lottery is not going to do too well whatsoever. First off, of course, is the problem that you're up against the greatest superpower of the world at the time, and we're losing. But secondly, these lottery tickets are not going to pay off in cash. They're mostly gonna pay off in bonds. And who wants to take bonds at this time in that government, which you think may very well collapse imminently. Uh, the next object we had in this case was something that highlighted the hyperinflation at that time. Meaning, you know, in the textbooks you see Weimar Germany where there's wheelbarrows worth of money. Well, in our case, we had hyperinflation right here in the United States at that time. In fact, there's a well-known letter at that time from George Washington that says a wagon full worth of money will not buy a wagon full worth of provisions. And so how do you stop hyperinflation if you're an investor? We're looking at Massachusetts bonds at this time. And these are some of the first known commodity bonds. In other words, these bonds are not going to pay off necessarily in cash, but if there's inflation, it's going to pay off in five bushels of corn 68 pounds and four sevenths part of a pound of beef, 10 pounds of sheep wool, and 16 pounds of sole leather. Today, we have something called TIPS, which are Treasury Inflation Protected Securities. This is a tip from 1780. And so that's our first case. We'll be back soon with the second case from this Out of the Vault exhibit and hope you join us. Mm -hmm.